There is a proverb in the Bemba tribe which says, Chimbui tekarange namai kata. Meaning, don't be like a hyena, be like a lion. Don't be a scavenger. Always look for your own prey. Start to think, I can do something for myself. So, Chimbui tekarange namai kata. Don't be like a hyena who waits for the handouts from a government. But to think, what should I do as a government myself? Then I think Africa will change. Ngali is a lion, not a hyena. His mission is to mentor many more lions. Then he says there will be change. When he started his working life as a caterer on ocean liners crossing the seas from harbor to harbor, he observed all types of people in all types of places. That's when it became clear to him that our environment is our destiny and therefore that if you act on your environment by being a lion, not a hyena, you'll improve your way of life and in his case, the life of others. In 2001, when he returned to Zambia, brimming with energy, drive and experience, Stain was confronted with the combined effects of the country's economic collapse and the spread of HIV AIDS that had infected 32% of the people in some of Zambia's cities. The city was actually terrible to live in. Poverty because of no, no employment plus the disease, it was terrible. At the same time as Stain's return to Zambia, Livingston's prize asset, the magnificent Victoria Falls, began to attract tourists. Stain was offered a position as food and beverage manager for Sun International. Their hotels along the Zambezi are a gateway to the falls. <laughs> Hello, Stan. Very quickly, okay. Stain's passion right. for identifying Thanks. solutions for social problems took him out of the kitchen and into the community. Ah, messages again. Let me just check these messages. He's the hotel's corporate social investment manager and his work is never done. Okay. Ow! Everybody has got my phone number. Everybody. And, and it's known my phone is open 24 hours. Morning, morning. You sent a message on which phone? This same phone? I have one phone for the community. About that one yeah. does not switch uh, yeah. off. I'll, I'll phone you as soon as it's ready. Until I go to the grave. I'll go with it. <laughs> Fortunately, Stain can realize his dreams through the hotel's social investment scheme. With tourism being the biggest employer in Livingston and Sun International being the biggest hotel group, he can plow some of the profit back into the communities. Here, he's known as Chief Strawberry. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Mr. Strawberry, how are you? How are you today, man? Cool. Yeah, Chief Strawberry, <laughs> the way it started, you know, we were working on uh, uh, trials on strawberries. Chief Strawberry, how are you? Hello, Cherry, how are you doing? And uh, the name just spread, Chief Strawberry. So even if, if you are at the hotel now, Strawberry, morning. you go and ask and says, can you see Stain? A number of them doesn't even know my real name. But at the moment to say, uh, Chief Strawberry, everybody jumps. Oh, yeah, we know where he is. That's it. Never get behind a zebra. It kicks. Stain leaves the hotel grounds early for a typical day in his life in which he and his Skoro Koro, as he calls his rattle-ridden car, will travel far and wide to check on a few of the more than 50 diverse projects that he has initiated and coordinates. One of the first problems Stain had to address as corporate social investment manager was the overwhelming presence of street children in Livingston. 
Word had spread that tourists with money to spare were flocking to the area, and the children, many of whose parents had died of HIV and AIDS, had to find a way to survive. They could not count on the government, as the economy at the time had come to a standstill, along with the institutions that might have helped them. So Stain and his partners gave their support to five orphanages. This is called the Lubasi Orphanage. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Uh, we discovered that most of them had lost their fathers and their mothers because of the onset of HIV and AIDS. How many children do you have? 45. 45 children. <laughs> She's the chief mother. It's okay because I've stayed with these children. I take them as if they are my own children now. After the children had been placed in their new homes, the next obstacle was how to feed them. Stay never sees a problem in isolation. Here, his integrated approach places food production at the core of his solution. We're going to have a tank on top, uh, 5,000, over 5,000 liters of water. From there, water into the pipes and irrigating. And over this portion where you see the pores, this is where I'm going to put uh, plants that creep up. The hotel also buy, and also the community will buy, and the children will feed. It makes me feel good because I've seen the children growing from when they were small until when they will be big, when they will be able to, to live on their own and to carry on with this agriculture. This multiplier effect, where there is the potential to generate other initiatives, is something Stain always looks for in a project, as is sustainability. We've been in this home from 2003. We are still here, and we continue to be here <laughs> until the home is fully sustainable. That's what we do. He knows all the children. Let me say he's also a big father for this home. <laughs> I'm already got a picture of how it will look like. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. And this is not just an idle fantasy. When Stain first tackled the socio-economic problems of Livingston, he had to disprove many myths. One of them was that vegetables would not grow in the area. So, in true Stain style, he set up a training center at the hotel. It all started from here. We started with a small uh, propagation house, this one you see and then the seedlings go into the outer schemes within Livingston and Kazungula. Basically, this is for training the local farmers so that they go and duplicate the same model out there. So those ones who want to go into herbal growing, we bring them here. Who want to use uh, herbal growing using um, worm tea, worm compost, we bring them here. Organic farmers, we bring them here. They learn here, and from here, they can duplicate into their sites. Through the help of this training facility, over 300 new farming projects now supply the tourist industry and local markets with fresh produce. By way of example, when this hotel opened in 2001, all fresh produce was imported. Now, local farmers supply more than 80% of its needs. So, let's move to the next stop. My work is diverse. As I tell Davis, I go to the orphanage, I see, I look at this child. I saw her when it was a baby. Now I see this child is going to school and laughing at me. Hey, I can stay, I can stay. I feel good. <laughs> Stain is not a pushover. Uh, Ed, uh, what's the better word I can say? Handouts without any rules absolutely destroy. This I can tell you. When he supports a project, he makes sure the people honor it they destroy. in return. Oh, please, can I just have a look? Here. This is Maramba Old Age Home, and we also put up a garden. The AIDS pandemic not only created many orphans, but left old people without a support system as well. Yes, 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 their children are gone of AIDS. Children gone, it's... If you go from 1985, up to now, we are seeing the impact because of HIV AIDS and the, these are the same old people, the children who, who could have looked after them are no longer there. That's why we have more requests for old people to wanting to come and stay at this home. 
As with so many of the projects that STAIN coordinates, the challenge is always to create sustainable revenue-producing systems that improve the beneficiary's well-being and develop skills at the same time. When I came here, I knew nothing about the garden. But now I can do my own farm without even going to an agronomist to explain to me what to do because of Mr. Musungaile's projects. This one? I'm very impressed. <laughs> the money we save, we can buy electricity or something we need urgent. But if we don't have that garden, instead of buying medicine, we'll buy tomato. So you see that it's, it's helping us. But, uh, you know, this is just an iceberg. We, are, we know for sure that there are so many people around the country who are in need of this help. <laughs> This is Chairman. A colleague of Staines came across him while visiting relatives in a remote rural area. All Chairman's children had died of AIDS, and he relied on the scraps that the people in his village could afford to give him. So the man was very frail when he came. That's why you see, when he sees me, he dances, because he says I'm his goat. <laughs> they tell him I'm not your goat. <laughs> goat is in heaven. <laughs> yeah. This phone never stops ringing. Hello, Stan. Ah, no, I haven't looked at the message because I'm driving. I'm now going to uh, Linda Farm for the blind. The life of a blind person in Livingstone was street begging. Children are crying, and we are bread earner, and we are not employed. We are somehow left out. The Bible says that a man or a husband has been placed to be a head of the house to look for food for his family. Where do we go to? So we have to go in, into the street begging. But practice makes everything perfect. If one finds himself in a strange or in another world, try to find out how you can help yourself. By 2001, the state had no longer been able to support the farms for the blind, so when Stain found out about their plight, he partnered with agricultural NGOs to try and turn their situation around. This song, uh, it reminds of my previous wife. She was not fond of going to the field. Now I said, let's we go to the field and cultivate through agriculture. We can have something. Yeah, we can eat, we can find clothes. Now I said, if you happen to let yourself be less poverty, to really be on us, to ruin us, and we have, we have nowhere to go. But all's not well on the Linda farm for the blind. The pump that provides water to their fields stopped working a few months back and Stain's time and funds are presently too stretched to affect a solution. When it was working, we are able to sell our crops. Not only to Sun International, but even to local communities. But this year, uh, it was difficult. The same thing we had at first. Did you manage to get the accessories from Songwe? I know you are still busy with that pump also which broke down. All Stain can do now is call on his network of partners to find help. But these things all take time, something that you do not have if you're living from hand to mouth. This time to campaign I'm gonna call him. No matter how much he dreams of sustainability for each of the projects he initiates, hard reality will often keep those dreams in check. And although he's not daunted by these setbacks, he often feels frustrated by his limitations. Even 
Even when he goes to his favorite place for meditation and reflection, he's not spared a reminder of how much work there is left to be done. Uh, much of the time I come here in the late afternoons, after a hard work driving around in the community, I sit here and watch uh, the tiger fish, fishermen. And I start to imagine how much energy he uses just to come and catch a few pieces of fish just for the pot. And the high risk involved by the edge of the force. It's such people like that. If I had the resources to save him from the danger of falling over that force, the catching fish by the edge. And, and it really inspires me when I see such kind of bravery in such people. And that inspiration makes me create a lot of projects and programs in the community just to save people like us. <laughs> Stop, can't start. Some people have asked me questions. They say, Chief Trouble, why can't he buy you a new vehicle? It doesn't do this. This thing is perfect. I tell them, excuse me, do you know my work? Do you know what I do in the community? This vehicle, I never get any problem with it. It's perfect. I can uh, move from here to Cape Town and back. This vehicle I drive fits me too well. How will it look like I go with a big 4x4 costing $100,000? Instead of using those dollars to save the community, I go and buy myself a car. Is it making any sense? No! Who am I impressing? I'm just going to depress the communities. Stain is far more interested in providing tools to change the negative circumstances of these communities for the better. He approaches the wide range of projects he oversees as an entrepreneur developer. Here with this group of widows, he's done exactly that, and they have grown from strength to strength. In terms of Stain's proverb, they are lionesses taking responsibility for their lives and those of their surviving relatives. One donation several years back has led to many initiatives on their part, and Stain is very impressed. They are saying, we want needles to sew for the orphans, clothes for the orphans. True to Stain's ideal of interconnected projects, the widows sell their home-sewn linen back to the hotel that first funded them. Part of the deal is to make clothes for the disadvantaged orphans and old people who are also victims of HIV and AIDS. From just a mere one donation, they have been increasing and increasing and adding value on so many products. These videotapes are being discarded in the world today. So these women, they get this, and they make bags out of it. Proper recycling, taking care of the environment and producing valuable products, and this is what's happening here. Stain always stresses the importance of sustainability yes. and the multiplier effect. And this is the real demonstration of multiplier effect. From, from one single uh, donation, it goes on to multiply and diversify. This is a new diversification, and I've come here today to come and see how they produce peanut butter. Like in one day, the Mugatisa switch on. The only thing they do is to consult, and I give them advice. In one hour. Stain constructs sustainable systems by partnering with NGOs and universities to help build micro-enterprises like this one. It's my responsibility to make sure that I link them up 
to hygiene experts as well as production experts who can guide them on the mixtures and how much power have they got to use over specified weights of peanuts and so on and so on. And this is brilliant and I'm so excited. Bye-bye. <laughs> you see, it's things like this that makes my job very interesting. I mean, it's so exciting to find these women, widows, most of them in that group, they're all widows. They even buy themselves aprons for making peanuts for the first day today. Can you imagine? Ah, this is fantastic, I tell you. I am so excited. For every part of my life, there's something exciting that I come across every day. And that's why I put in more hours. I don't care receiving a phone call midnight, three o'clock, from people like that makes me happy. The Katombora Reformatory is Stain's next destination. It's 60 kilometers outside Livingston, right on the Zambezi River. There's only one reformatory in Zambia, and here the young offenders are taught skills to prime them for the labor market. Stain has run a range of projects here over the years. Today, he's checking up on one of the more recent. Fish can be trained just like the way you can train chickens. You train them by having specific times of feed and by certain sounds. They can even jump and swing and dance the way you want. Even fish you can train. And over here, we go through that process of training. Apart from skilling up the boys, this project has the potential of earning good money for the reformatory, plus providing them and the local community with much needed protein. So while I'm here, sizes, and then after seeing the sizes, I'll be able to advise if they will need more feed. All those aspects have got to be looked into. Stain has come here on a mission. Livingston is hosting the UN World Tourism Organization. Stain realizes that the reformatory will benefit from the boom only if the fish are fit for the restaurant table. <laughs> Looking at the sizes, the average size, they are somewhere around 180 to 200 grams, which are not ready. So we've got to continue to increase the feeding rate so that in one month's time, they can be able to achieve that kind of weight. So it's fine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Besides mentoring the fish farmers, Stain makes sure that the trainee builders from the reformatory test their skills in the outside world. Recently they completed a block of flats for teachers at a school a little further south because their huts were destroyed by floods. They melted down because the houses are made of mud. So when we visited the school, it was such a very uh, pathetic sight to find that the teachers now had shifted into the classrooms. To get to the school, you again drive towards the Zambezi, down a very rough track. This road goes down, down, down. But it doesn't reach the school where they're going. We have to park somewhere and then walk. Ah. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> this, uh, the school we're going to is completely out of the way, it's quite rural. A number of children here come from the islands and most of their parents are fishermen fishing in along the river Zambezi. This is the block of flats that uh, we built. Stain has come to the school to check on the buildings and how teachers were feeling about their new flats. Welcome. All the materials were coming from Sun International. They work together with the prisons, Katombora prisons here. The, the, the lads, those people who are undergoing rehabilitation are the ones who came to build it. They were all mad huts. Teacher here, teacher here, teacher there. And in this one, there were two staying there. Stain arrived in the late afternoon when the children have to cross the river to go home. So he went along together with the headmistress and her deputy to observe their setup. Stain had never actually witnessed the children's precarious journey across the river. 
Now he finds himself confronted with another situation that needs his urgent attention. None of the children can swim and they don't have life jackets. The river is full of hippos and crocodiles and the boat is not suitable to deal with such a precious load. It's things like this that inspires me to create projects. If you look at those children, imagine they're packed like sardines in that boat. And if anything happens on that boat, 30 of those children perish at once. And that's what makes me do all these things that I do. It's because of things like this. I face needs of this type all the time in this society. I have limited resources as a person, but I just have to look at people and organizations, partners that can be able to come in and help. Yeah, I shouldn't have come down very far here. I don't know how to get out of here, but uh, let's try. This looked like an impossible yeah. fix for the Skorokoro, stuck at the bottom of a hill in loose sand. But in a fitting analogy to Stain's optimism and can-do attitude, after asking us to put the camera down and give him a push, he was off, crabbing his way sideways up the hill, all dust and screaming engine. There is good reason for his initiatives winning the prestigious Invelo Responsible Tourism Awards for five years running. He just won't give up. A combination of despair and joy fuels Stain's enthusiasm. There are many challenges ahead. A sensitive issue is a prevalent belief in witchcraft which makes people fatalistic and robs them of their responsibility and freedom. You see, there are certain communities that I've come across. They don't believe in anything else except witchcraft. But then, how do you break that bond of witchcraft to make them change the mindset and become productive for their lives? That's a challenge. You can only achieve it through one thing, and that's education. There's no other solution. Education, education, education. And that's it. Ichimbui, take a lange nama ikata. That is the preaching. So that has to be implanted in the minds of the communities you work with, or individuals, or entrepreneurs that you work with. Take responsibility of what they do. Then I think Africa will change. <laughs>